Hey everyone, Ooh. welcome back to 10 Rounds of Missing. I'm Alfred, I'm the Dungeon Master. And that's not a sex thing. Everyone go! My name is Daisy, and I'm playing Andy. I'm Nessie, and I I'm Blesser. I'm Rose, and I'm playing Ren. Hell yeah. So, um... Last time we did the Session Zero, this is the first start of an actual episode. As opposed to the 15 minutes we spent building characters. I feel like that was longer than 15 minutes, though. I mean, what? I could check it. It is exactly 22 minutes and 52 seconds. Look at us go. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Mm -hmm. So, proper session one this time. How's everyone feeling? Yeehaw. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. I really oh. want to point out how all of you, well... A good portion of you made Western characters, <laughs> and then we've got one who builds guns. <laughs> Whoops! All cowboys. <laughs> like, is a is a prank being played on me right now? Did you all did you all plan this? We want to Absolutely remind you not. we're the we're the Midwest. We got to live up to our characters. I really just wanted to play a cowboy. Two of the three of us were like, okay, we're just going to play something different than what we normally play. So I'm playing a female character that's also, like, not tall and not charismatic. And I'm playing a and boy. And Daisy was like, yeah, yeah, boy. God. However, he is awkward. He's halfway different from what you normally play. Maybe he'll end up charming by the end of it. It's a great story. <laughs> Maybe. You, you never know. Right. <laughs> it's ready. It's time. All right. So, um... Does anyone want to do their character intro first? What do we need? I'll go first. We can go reverse alphabet. Okay. Um, okay. Rhodes going first? Yes. All right. I hope you're ready to role play. What do we need to say? <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me mute my mic, get my character voice, and then come back. So it's going to take like two seconds. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to tell us how we run into each other? Or uh, are we just starting raw for the, the edge? Or yeah, whatever? this is the prologue. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me, let me, all right. And I'll open my notes. So do you want us all to right, tell you what like, we're doing beforehand? Is that what this is? Partially. <laughs> I've got some of it, and you'll handle the rest. Okay. How exciting. Well, I'm Ren of Timbers, and I'm ready to go. Let's, what are we doing? What are we doing? All right. Ren, you originated from a cyberpunk world, right? Indeed. Fantastic. You're standing on top of a building. Um, it's a little far away from anything else. The nearest one to you is about 20 feet away, but that's 20 feet of open air. Around you, there's a disconcerting swirl of neon, as is typically the case for a cyberpunk world. And the street is so far below, you really can't see it. It's kind of just black shadows. Well, I've certainly got myself into quite a pickle here. Yep. Uh, cars, flying cars, naturally, kind of blast around above you. And uh, somewhere very, very low below you, you can hear someone uh, attempting to rob a bank by the sounds of it. Which is perfect, because oh you're also trying to steal something. Oh, uh, what am I trying to steal here? You're trying to score some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Am I using this uh, this dear bank robbery to my distract to hinder me? Yeah. I, play, I, I want to. Know. Yeah, they're in the same building. Uh, which means that if you oh, can make yeah. this 20-foot jump or do something else, you have free run of that building. Uh, what do you do? Let me, let me, let me do a quick check. Uh, I am going to... Uh, I guess I'm going to... Oh my gosh. I'm going to try and jump off this building. <laughs> try and jump off this building. Okay. And uh, make the most of it, so. You got some dice? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. Make me an acrobatics check. All right. 
first roll of the campaign. I hope everyone's ready. Oh, we got 17 on acrobatics. Hell yeah. You, uh, actually, do you want to describe how you make this leap across these, t uh, across one building into a second? Oh, absolutely. I ready myself. Just my, just my belt. Ready my, brace myself. And I get, a indeed, a, a running start and doing magnificent backflips of the air, landing in a very, very, very cool three-point pose. And also there's like a whole bunch oh, of broken different. glass all over you. <laughs> uh, just extra building materials, no big, no yeah. big, I'm used to it. <laughs> Look, it's a movie, it's soft glass, it doesn't cut you, it just looks cool. It's like glitter. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Might be a bit of an eye patch for others, but... <laughs> All right. You start rifling through uh, drawers here on the hunt for some drugs. Do I have to make a pick? Uh, you know what? Yeah. Um, just make me a perception roll. All right. Perception is about here. So... <laughs> That's a one, Captain. <laughs> All right. Uh, you find um, six pills of the drugs you need, and uh, you find a whole bottle of things that make it so the neon lights don't hurt your eyes as much. Solid. But yeah. Solid. For the shit that you need, uh, there's only about um, six pills rattling around in the empty bottle. You're pretty sure you've stolen someone else's medication based on the fact <laughs> that it has a prescription stuck to the side. But well, as you can read, it does contain the chemicals that you require to make sure your arm continues to function. Solid. Then I will take it and <laughs> get, uh, be on my way. Cool. Go ahead and add that to your inventory. As you're planning to leave, uh, you feel like you basically feel like someone grabbed you by the stomach and just kind of jiggled it up and down a little bit. So and for the first time in your life, you see darkness that isn't touched by neon lights. And then you're nowhere. Oh, dear. Bless her. You're up next. All right. So, Ness, does Bless her have a, a vehicle or mode of transportation, or does she, like, ride the space bus? She can fly. <laughs> okay. So I guess ride the space bus. <laughs> She's like hitchhiker, sort of, but like super sketchy. So I don't think anyone would ever pick her up. Uh, <laughs> perfect. So you're dropping off your most recent bounty. You're uh, in the back seat of someone's car and there's a dead man kind of oozing on the uh on the seats next to you <laughs> uh and they 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 agree to drop you off over next to the mako barracks i sent the map over um however that map isn't everything there is some extra stuff that isn't covered on that map but that's the most uh prominent things but mm -hmm. you're heading to near the mako barracks okay and Just, uh <laughs> There's a there's a close as you can get me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh I, I guess I'll uh, drop you off and get the dead guy out of my car. Um am I gonna be implicated in a crime or something? Says the driver. Um You know, I don't think it's so much of a crime when it's a bounty. This man has done crimes and I am stopping the crimes. Well boy howdy, that basically makes it an anti crime. It's a little like helping the police. Glad to be part a lot of the more fun. Uh, he drops you off, and then, uh... <laughs> oh man, I I just realized that you didn't say what his car was, so I have to. I'll say that it's like a horse-drawn chariot, <laughs> but flying horses. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> And yes, there is a couch just tied to the back of that chariot. <laughs> a couch that's now covered in blood. Yes, probably. it is very gooey. Ugh. 
Uh, make me a strength roll to see how well you get this guy into this office. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, I just like completely forgot where my strength was. It's been a hot minute since I've done D&D. That is a non-natural 20. Holy shit. You live this so guy. So can I just yeah. sling him over my shoulder? Yeah, just I was going like, to say. All right. You lift this guy into like this perfect fireman's carry and just like buffalo charge him inside and just slap him down on the bounty board's desk. Well, uh, the bounty officer there, uh, his name's Yashar. You've met him several times, kind of looks over the corpse. He says, well, Hart's got a bounty. Well, you don't have to ask so surprised about it. Look. You've got a reputation around this office here. Let me just look over the cards and see what we've got. Uh, just don't mind me. I'm going to do some paperwork. Uh, he starts rifling through the corpse's pockets until he finds his wallet. <laughs> uh, he pockets the 50 in there and then uh, takes out the identification cards. And he reads on there and he says, Well, David Blaster. One for armed robbery and an accomplice in a murder. And his eyes kind of drift over to the massive, massive wall of uh, one in posters. And uh, if you would follow his gaze, you would notice he's looking right at David Blaster's poster where it says wanted alive. Well. You uh, realize that a little bit. Yeah, he you, got a little feisty. <laughs> you realize we need this man to interrogate. Don't we have somebody who can fix this? That requires a, a, a sort of religious folk. And I've got to say, God don't like us that much based on the fact we keep killing his creations. We kill people that kill people. Look, it's not like a it's not like a you can't rob a thief thing. It's a it's it's just a bad thing to do. Anyway, God's not a fan of us. We don't have many clerics on staff. And by that I mean we have zero. Well, fuck. But he did have a bounty, so I guess I can fork you over some silver. Maybe some of the buttons and lint I've got in my pockets. Let me count you something out here. He starts to open a cash register. And begins counting some things out. Hopefully uh, there's enough for bus fare in there. But as he goes to hand it to you, you feel a weird jerking sensation in your stomach. What in the fuck? And then you are yanked away to another dimension and then immediately back to this one. She just kind of stands there with her arms out like... Oh no, you're in, you're in somewhere else. You've been immediately teleported to jail like you're playing Monopoly. Yeah, but still just, like, arms out trying to get balance, like, what yep. the fuck? Absolutely. <laughs> and we'll cut your scene there, and we'll go over on to Anders. Yeehaw. Anders, you're sitting in a field somewhere. I sure as hell am. Off in the distance, you can see what looks like a skyscraper with two other skyscrapers for legs kind of walking. Not that skyscrapers would normally walk, but this one does because it has other skyscrapers for legs. Naturally. Uh, it's uh, from where the groinal region would be on a mammal. It's got this massive piece of farming equipment and it's running over these like grayish green fields and attempting to collect the like powdery leaves from plants. Do I recognize this as a normal thing, or am I feeling alarm? Oh, that's a that's a standard piece of farming equipment. Just the good old natural landscape. Yep. God damn, I hate plants. Walking factory. So, as you watch, uh, your ma comes out. Howdy, ma. Howdy, child. The machines are at it again. Watching the walking factories gather up their resources. Eh? I could have been in that city if it weren't for Pa. 
Yes. God damn. I could have been helping making those machines, Ma. We could have been making good money. But instead, my ass is sitting here in this field watching the city scrapers move faster than I can. A shame. You know, you have a gift, and I don't think you've ever been able to properly appreciate it. What sort of gift is it if all I'm dealing in is plants and animals? Well, it's a plant and animal related gift there, you ungrateful child. <laughs> Sorry, Ma. It's okay. We all got our wheat to thatch. Or some other folks he's saying. Everything all right, Ma? Oh, a uh, horse just died. Thank God. Yeah. Was it Angelica? Yep. She's had that random horse death syndrome for a couple of years now. Really thought it would have taken a bit shorter. I've been praying every night, and I was thinking God had given up on us. But finally, God damn. You know, Red in hell, you ungrateful beast. You know, child, your misanthropy kind of worries me sometimes, but seeing as there are only like four people out here, I suppose I'm kind of stuck with this. <laughs> I'll find the sunshine one day, Ma. Just once I'm out of these fields, all it'll take, I'm sure. Now that Angelic is gone, that's one piece of hellscape off our land. You know, there are the nights where I hope that you'll find the peace and forgiveness within you, and then there are the nights that I also hope that I can stifle the urge to go over to your room and smother you in your sleep. Oh, Ma, you're so sweet. Yep. I love when you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Boy, am I glad that... You know what, actually? Annie, there's been something I've been meaning to tell you about the nature of your birth and uh, all that. Oh, boy. It's not about the nature of your conception. I'm aware that you were not a fan of that story. You guys keep telling it. All the cows know about it. Look, They keep making fun of me for it. Look, we think it's fun. You talk to the cows... They talk to me. It ain't. It's some of that nature magic. I'm so tired. They call me the couch baby, and I'm so tired. Look, I wouldn't go talking to them cows. They're awful gossips. Anyway. They have the worst things they say, Ma. You don't know how cruel they can be. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's always when I go to role play with Daisy. It just... I get blown out of the water at some point during the session. It happens at least once every session. This is natural. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is why DMs shouldn't role play against each other. We're too powerful. <laughs> well, anyway, you had a story to tell, Mark. Right? Yes, I had a, I had a, a, a proclama a, a deposition, if you will. I know that we live out here in a manner analogous to like a space Amish. And that you're not exactly a big fan of that, despite your uh, pre predisposition towards the natural magics. Yeah. Well, there's something about that that I've been meaning to say for... How old are you? I'm, I'm 23 coming up, Ma. All right. Uh, for about 24 years, then. Something that I've been uh, meaning to say. Um... Your 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 dad and uh, your great-grand know, know neither, but... Uh, I'm infertile and have been for uh, my entire life. Now, I don't know much about that biology or none of that business, but doesn't that mean that I'm not possible? Uh, you just find me out in the cabbage patch or something? Well, the thing about that, and as she's beginning to tell, uh, you feel a weird jerking sensation in your tum region. Oh, Ma, I don't feel too good. Yeah, the, the nature of uh, knowing that you're kind of a doorstopper is uh, a bit of a... And then as, as she's going to finish that, folksy saying, you're yanked off to another dimension. Oof. And the three of you are now in jail. Are we in the same jail cell? You are all in one holding cell, along with um, a man who appears to be, like, one of those, like, 
terrifying statues that they put out to stare the to stare scare kids about uh, like knights. Oh my god! And Jesus. a very small. Uh, he looks like a halfling with um, pince nez glasses clipped to his nose and a a book under each arm, and also one giant book filling up uh, his entire backpack. And he's kind of just like hunched next to the wall. I'm gonna look around. Is there anybody else in the cell besides the three of us? Um, no, there's you, there's you three, and then there's uh, uh, the gnome with bo- uh, the halfling with books, and then there's the the metalman. Okay. So there's five total. What in the Sam Hill just happened? Frankly, I'm not quite sure myself here. Uh, I was at home, and now I'm here. I don't think I'm in my world anymore. Interesting. This must be some of that magic at work here. Hart, you recognize where you are, though. You are in a Deva prison. Well, shit. If you would like, I can, uh, if if you allow me, rather, I will catch up the other two on what exactly uh, this is. Or if you like, I can just tell you. No, I think probably we should just tell everyone. Okay. Well, I can't do a bounty on someone who's already in jail. (laughs) It doesn't matter. (laughs) Okay. So I'm telling you this because uh, Hart would know anyway. Um, Because we're in Hart's home dimension. All right. Um, If you look at the map that I made, you'll see that there's a lot of things on it. And in the bottom left of it, there is, uh, what is that? Citadel, the castle or something? Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel, thank you. Yeah, there's the Crown Jewel and uh, the White Citadel. That's what they are. You're in the White Citadel, which is one of the larger uh, strongholds used by the Devas. And the Devas are massive winged uh, uh, humanoids with... uh, Skin in cool tones, you know, purples and blues and the like. Ooh. And actually, um, let me bring up the map for our YouTube viewers. I'm going to look at the other two in the cell with me. Um, I don't know what all just happened. I seem to be missing my memory and parts here. Um, could you two lovely ladies tell me where in the Sam hell I am? Welcome to jail. No, but here we go again. Now, I I have never ventured out beyond the farmlands, but I don't think any of my cow yelling has warranted me some jail time. Uh, I think there's been a misunderstanding. Uh, Told told my father I stopped having run-ins with the law, and yet here I am again. Well, I was turning in a bounty, and suddenly, poof, I'm here. So I don't really know what the fuck is going on. I don't like the sounds of this one bit. Uh, I'm going to look out at the um, two people outside of the jail cell. I'm going to look to the book halfling first because books tend to mean knowledge. Um, excuse me. Uh, I think there's been a misunderstanding. Howdy. Uh, there has, in fact. Um, those two are in the cell with you. You're all five in jail. Oh, okay. My bad. Howdy there. I'm the archivist. If you want to, you can walk over to me and press the use key while looking at me to talk. <laughs> what? Oh. The... <laughs> Why is that person talking like a cityscape? Don't. I... <laughs> More of a runescape. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I? Should I do an investigation on this uh this here thing? Feel free. Okay. Uh, that investigation there is a seventeen. Nice. Um. So you you've been uh sucked into another dimension, definitely. Oh joy! Here we go again. Here we wow okay, I guess no, you are I'm level joking. four. No, I'm joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> Look, if we want to, if we want to canonize some lore here, we can. 
I don't. I promise you, I don't. I like my lore done beforehand or afterhand. I can't remember whatever lore I make up in the moment. <laughs> Look, you can all watch it again. It's easy this way. <laughs> this is true. Because I have to watch to remember my freaking accent. Anyway, no, no. So we're in another dimension. There's a song in my head right now. Uh, so there's a so we can interact with the. I'm asking meta wise. We can interact with the other entity in the cage to get information. Yeah, if you want to talk to him, you're you're free to. Uh, okay, okay. I'm Aren't there two other sure. dudes in the box with us? Uh, the other one doesn't look so friendly. Oh. Well, I mean, neither do I. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm going to remember my accent and walk over to uh, the friendly looking fella. And I'm going to say, hello there, sir. Howdy there. I'm the archivist. Don't remember my name because I didn't file it away. Uh, I'm a librarian of sorts. And, uh, well, it looks like you folk all teleported in jail. Looks like you ran afoul of that anti-teleportation spell that the Devas did there set up. So we're stuck here. Uh, well, until your trial's up, yeah. Unless you want to try for a prison break scenario. <laughs> Archivist, what do you have on prison break scenarios? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> you know, surprisingly little. Uh, no one has ever escaped from one of these jails before. Oh, well, as, a, as one of my friends used to say, bet. And, uh... <laughs> Let me see if I can find something in my repertoire. And uh, DM, do we have our? Sh do we have any of our stuff? Yeah, you were all teleported stuff? with everything you had on you, which is whatever you would have had at level four. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna ask one more. I know this is super, super meta, so if you can't answer it, it's fine. So we're in a jail cell with bars, traditional. Do the bars have hit points? <laughs> no, but they do have a DC. Okay. Well, uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm going back into to character. Hello, well, everyone, uh, my name is not that accent. My name is Rin of Timbers. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I like to make things, create them, and I happen to have two different types of uh, dangerous type of chemicals that might be able to get us out of here. How good are you lads with fire? Look at um, me. Sorry? I said, look at me. I don't, I don't do no much with fire. Uh, I'm mostly dealing with land. Uh, that worries me. I am not meant to be in this prison cell. Oh, Lord. I shouldn't have said those bad things about Angelica. <laughs> it's her revenge. Well, 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 tall, tall gangly, sir. What is your name there? You, can, you fine ladies can call me Andy. All right, we'll take that. I am Rin. I am not a fine lady. I am the alchemist, rather. And uh, Rin, Rin of Timbers, uh, Nissa, all those are fine, but fine lady, I'm more of a more of a dangerous lady, if you like. Uh, my dangerous lady, then, uh, <laughs> Rin. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look. At, so this guy, the scary-looking knight, is yeah. he alive? Uh, you're pretty sure. I'm gonna walk towards him. Um, excuse me. Uh, are you meant to be our guard, or are you uh, another one of these uh, prisoners with us? I know what I did. I don't like the sound of that one <laughs> bit. I'm gonna turn it right around. I'm gonna look at uh, Blesser and the cowboy hat. Um, I didn't quite catch your name. We got Rin. Who are you? Heart. Well, that's plenty sweet. All right. Um, I'm not, but cute of you to think so. <laughs> Looking up at you because you're, you know, a million feet tall. Not quite used to. I've never seen. I'm. I'm quite used to uh, Asimar types. Uh, so. Both of you were quite, yeah, quite get it out. Get it out now. Go ahead. Yep. You got a tail. <laughs> yeah, well spotted. That was pretty cool. Uh, and I like your cowboy hat. 
That's all I got. I'd like to not be here. Or it kind of just like smiles a little bit, not used to getting compliments. <laughs> just like, all right, hang on. I'm going to see what I can do. <laughs> I would also like to go up to the scary night dude and try and like intimidate him <laughs> into to helping, into like talking to me. You are free to try. I assume I am his height or taller. Uh, well, he is about your height, but he is also sitting down with his hand on his knee. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, I'm just going to try and intimidate him. Oh, that's a three. He, uh, he, he kind of he like clacks his metal wrist against his, uh, uh, against his armored knee in uh, recognition that he heard you and doesn't care. Just turn away from just like, fuck him. All right, whatever. The archivist uh, now kind of tries to helpfully speak up. He's like, I realize that I do have a name that begins with an A and a K sound, kind of like the alchemist, but I want to know this is my only name. So, yeah, that's all. Um, anyway, so there's a law uh, uh, around these parts against anti teleportation, and that's probably why y'all ended up in here. You got teleported. Yeah, but we didn't do that. Or at least I didn't fucking do that. Well, that's unfortunate, but if you uh if in your trial you speak out to whoever teleported you, then you can probably get off, you know, with a warning and uh then they'll just kill that guy. But I don't know who teleported me. Mm. I was turning in a bounty and all of a sudden I am here. That's a uh, that's a uh... Yeah, that's a problem then. Uh, what that's... happens uh, if we go through our trial and they find us guilty of teleportation? Well, I think it's a pretty open and shut case, but uh, you either got a um, death by murder or a death by eventual overwork. They got a, they got the uh, labor pits for y'all. I don't know about either of you two ladies, but uh, I don't like that both of our options start with death. <laughs> I'm not particularly a fan of it either. Well, I believe I can break our bars out of here with my uh, either fire acid, preferably acid. We'll just have to stand back. Uh, are you both prepared to make a run for it is the real question. Those are just going to pull a gun out, just kind of like point it at the ceiling. Oh, dear. Good, good trigger discipline, obviously. No finger on the trigger, but just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You're, you're good to go I'm with them. I've been chasing cows my whole life. Let's do this. The archivist helpfully right. like gets up and like, well, he sets his books down and then he gets up and then he picks his book back up again. He's like, I would be, uh, uh, I'd be mighty thankful if y'all would help me on my escape too. I don't know if metal man wants to come, but I'm in here for killing and eating an angel. Uh, they really, they really want to get me. So hang on. Andy's going to start sweating. Did mm, you look familiar? You might know me. I'm a local librarian. Yeah, but you look more. I, do, do librarians I like to, to go to the library? You look more familiar than that. History. Yeah, make a history check. Are you trying to? Are you trying to put some lore here? No, I'm. J I yes. <laughs> hey, Kamish. Uh, yeah, that's a big old eight. He's the archivist. It's cool. <laughs> uh, archivist. Uh, I'm gonna call you Archie for now, for convenience sake. Uh, That's fine. Do librarians typically eat people? Is no, no, happen? they don't. Might I, might I ask why you went and ate somebody? Uh, well, seeing as it was an angel, there was an ulterior motive. Uh, it's like. Oh, how do I put this? Imagine if in your world, cops were all evil. Uh, uh, fabrication, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, don't no, you that live, sounds about right. Yeah, don't you live on dystopian Earth? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's like, imagine if the cops were all evil. Now, imagine also that if you killed and ate the heart of a cop, uh, you gained their powers. Now, imagine that they were like a deistic, like a biblical angel, like a, like a Christianity fella. Oh. 
uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at about now. Um, I've uh, I've got a few uh, angel powers cooked up in my sleeves here. What type of angel powers are we talking about? Uh, some pretty dope shit, if I do say so myself. Nothing in there so much as bending bars. They're pretty anti-magical. Um, uh -huh. But uh, everything else, uh, I'm a I'm a pretty high tier wizard now, just on account of eating one. Well, I as much. Go ahead. Is that how that works? Well, I didn't have him the morning I ate the guy, and I did have him the night I ate the guy. I'm willing to bet that is a that's a you know if you see a frog on a fence, somebody put him there. I don't quite understand. Uh, I don't quite understand what my accent is. Apparently, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't quite understand these metaphors you're slinging about. But I will be inclined to let you come with us should you prove yourself to be useful. Can you fly? Uh, yes, for a limited amount of time, once per day. Well, okay. I'm, I'm. Well, I need someone who <laughs> can fly and assist myself. As you can see, I am quite a small, small danger lady. Well, but, we could uh, try to steal a chariot. They got chariots around these parts? Yeah. Flying horses Can and everything. Point. Oh, Wish. Archie, you are quite fun. Archie, you are, Archie, you are many delicious points, and I am very inclined to let you come with us. Less showy than stealing a chariot is one of us could carry you. That yes. is also true. I like to prepare for the inevitabilities. I had a, a difficulties with uh, my last heist before I got teleported here. It's a long story. Heist? Oh my lord! I so really are I'm so sorry, Angelica. All right, are we ready? Right? We, so we're all in agreement. The four of us plus Andy. Nope, the four of us plus uh, Arden. I'm an afterthought. Archie. I knew it. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm trying to stay in character. I can't keep the accent. I can't keep serious. Oh, no, uh, I can also turn into animals. Um, wow. Not my. Um, forgot to. I don't quite enjoy it, but I could become. I just can't fly as an animal. Uh, it's some sort of stronger magic. It's stupid. Ooh, Get you stupid. Need to do that. Power. I, I greatly appreciate all of the suggestions. I promise you it was just a singular concern I had. Everyone does not need to have the ability to fly. I was just curious. Angels tend to be flying in my book. That is all, y'all. Speaking my language. <laughs> Quite literally. All right, <laughs> then I have some alchemist, uh, alchemic acid here. I think that can melt the bars if we all stand back, or if we're officially, officially ready to go. Enough negotiations, enough agreements. Mr. Knight Scary over there wants to stay here. That's fine by me. I'm ready. All right, Archie. Staying back. Let her do her thing. All right. All right. And Rin is going to throw uh, alchemic acid at the bars out of her satchel. And objects automatically fail to save and take max damage. That's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. Um. You uh you melt uh three of the bars into a little puddle on the floor, and then two of them uh on either side of that hole just kind of half melt and become kind of like a like a sad little light post is what you're looking at here, like the light post <laughs> in Australia. They just melt <laughs> comedically goopy. Yeah. Hopefully that's big enough space for all of us to get through. I'd like to preserve my uh acid in case we run to run a fair run afoul of any of the. Uh, Dastily do us because I have no clue what dialect I'm speaking. <laughs> um, I have no, like I know what dialect. I don't know what slang I want to use. So I'm just using everything. That's part of the uh, future. It's fine. Yeah. So onward, onward. All right. And uh, Ren's gonna wait, gonna you know waddle her. No, she doesn't waddle. She's gonna speed walk her way out of the jail cell and do a little hop over the puddle. Yeah. <laughs> it's still neutralizing in the concrete. Uh, who wants to follow? I'll sure. go next. Yeah. Uh, I'll go last, actually. Okay. Um, so you're currently walking Ren, Hart, Archivist, Andy? Yeah. Cool. Yes. 
um, as you start walking out, uh, an alarm pretty much immediately trips the second your foot steps outside. Yeah. Could have expected that. Indeed. Fuck. So should we hurry then? We're running now. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. Feel free to run. Everyone, make me some acrobatics checks. Oh, boy. Ooh, I like being a barbarian. Fucking uh, six. Six, okay. I got an 18. Wow, all right. I got a 17. Nice. All right, Ren, you have tripped. <laughs> Everyone else has uh, uh, ran past you without noticing. <laughs> That's so rude. Uh, above... Not that small. <laughs> <laughs> above Ren, uh, the ceiling opens up um, as though it were made of clay. It appears to be made of like a concrete. Um, yeah, I guess all three of you would know, that, uh, would know what that is. Yeah, it looks like a concrete, but uh, it, it just kind of smooshes aside like two great invisible hands molded out of the way and from there a massive winged green humanoid uh wearing very light metal armor and a toga uh bearing a sword in one hand and what looks like a brick on a rope in the other uh comes down from the ceiling a brick on a rope what in the hell when Ma talked about heaven, I pictured a lot more clouds and a lot less bricks. Uh, can't wait to tell her and Paul about this. <laughs> I'm going to try and scramble backwards, maybe try and get to my feet. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, backwards towards everyone else, obviously, not back towards the fucking thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Hart, you're standing about 10 feet from the angel. Yeah. <laughs> and nope, sorry, not hard. Ren, you're standing about 10 feet from the angel. Joy. Everyone else is about 30 <laughs> feet from him. Uh let me see. I would like to run towards Ren in an effort to protect her from the brick wielding angel. <laughs> okay, feel free. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Oh, I know what. I, hold on, hold on. I have to. I have to look at something. Let me mute me and look at something. You got it all wrong, Mister Angel. Is it a? Can I tell if it's a boy? It appears to be. You got it wrong, Mister Angel. We didn't do nothing. We were teleported here against our will. You leave this dangerous lady alone. The, uh, the, the eyes on the big helmet kind of glow, and then um, what looks like light green fire kind of almost Ooh. burps out of the mouth as he begins to speak. Here's where you're all so standing, cool. by the way. Um, and in, in this voice that kind of echoes both in the room and inside your head, uh, he simultaneously shouts and whispers, Interlopers must be punished. Pardon? I didn't uh, quite get that. He he he's kind of just like taken aback at your at your nonchalance at it, uh, and he gets ready to attack. And everyone roll initiative. Well, fine. Ooh, no, but for real, what did he say? Oh, you couldn't understand. Okay, he said interlopers must be punished. I'm Ooh. not even an interloper. Yeah. I'm from here. <laughs> I heard the punish part, but I literally couldn't hear the accent. Like it's it's better in real life and terrible over uh, this. Anyway, rolling initiative. Cool. I'm throwing this bag of dice against the wall. Get I'm some throwing sage. it out. It's not even my dice. Uh, that's a solid eight, eight for initiative. Ooh. Oh. I got an eighteen. Cool. I got twenty one. Wow. Glad I chose some really nice armor. (laughs) All right. Hart, go ahead and go first. 
um, am I far enough back to warrant like going down to one knee and trying to rifle snipe this bitch? Yeah, you're 30 feet away. Cool. I'm just gonna pull out a fucking rifle just out of like my cape and just take a knee and try and aim for something squishy. Nice. A rifle? Okay, Joseph Joestar. Yes, I have a rifle, okay? I also have a pistol. I'm a well-prepared cowboy. That is a non-natural 20 to hit. Bitchin'. All right, where's my fucking D10? Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Oh boy, it's a D10. Yeah, that's oh, why I cool. wanted to use that one instead of my uh, my revolver. <laughs> um, Dex mod. Fuck, what's my Dex? When it says plus your modifier, does that mean? the saving throw or just the modifier just the modifier okay so that's that's 14 damage cool uh you clip him in the wing and it goes right through and uh leaves this like big bloody exit wound like the size of a basketball hoop on the way out Oof! and it paints this like giant ugly hula hoop of blood on the floor behind him Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy, you're up next. Hello? Hello? You're muted. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I'm going to run up and put myself between uh, Rid and the Angel. Cool. Um, going to pull out my greatsword. Like that? Uh, yeah. Um... And I'm going to take a swing at him. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a uh, 21 to hit. <laughs> okay, you hit him. Cool. Um, amazing. Um, that is uh, six slashing. Radical. You keep back from her, you hear? <laughs> Oh, let me try this one. Justice is judgment. Oh, I like that. Big spookmans. All right. The archivist uh, will go ahead and uh, crack open one of his big books. Actually, first he puts down two books and then stands on them to make himself look a little bit bigger. And then from the big book on his back, he retrieves uh, a specific page out of it, um, reads it quickly, closes the book, puts it back on his back, thinks for one second, gets the book back out again, and then rereads the passage to make sure he's got it, and then puts the book back. And then silently casts mm -hmm. a little spell there. And the angel is uh, wrapped in thorny vines of some variety. Nice. Andy, in fact, can actually sniff out their uh, uh, their 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 plantiness. Uh, yeah, Ooh. they're very natural plants that have somehow grown out of concrete. All right, you're making this nature magic thing look pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's a way of everything, including eating hearts. <laughs> Uh, the angel is now going to use his turn to try to break out of it. Uh, he gets one of his arms out and two of his wings. Uh, everything else is still stuck in the vine. Wait, two of his wings? How many wings does he have? Two. Okay, so <laughs> this, this one has two. One and a half wings. It, Ness, it could have been one and a half wings. It could have been one and a half, one and a quarter wings. You know? I don't know how biblical we're getting with this. Yeah, it could just be a bunch of eyes and rings. If only. <laughs> You're up next, Ren. Uh, I mean, we should continue running, but we, I, I don't want to this, uh, this angel to escape and stab us in the back, so. Uh, Rin's gonna run up with her. She's gonna heft her great club and uh, try and do some uh, damage. All right, go ahead and roll for that then. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! 
that is a six to hit. I'm gonna go get a nibble set of dice because I believe in uh, superstition and that these mm -hmm. suck. I'm gonna back up though. I like I want to use my turn to back up ten feet and like you know tell like signal to Andy that's what I'm doing. Like I'm backing up. Thank you for your help, but I sucked at that attack, so I'm gonna scoot to the door. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, and then we are back up to heart again. Uh, I guess I'm just going to try and take another shot first and be like, I'm not a fucking inter. I'm from here. <laughs> Go ahead That's and roll that. A 19 to hit. Yeah, you, uh, you, you hit him. Yeehaw. That's 12 damage. Cool. You, uh, you, you clip his helmet and put a pretty sizable dent in it. <laughs> wow. Uh, he, uh, he kind of, he kind of glares at this. Um, you can't see his face snatch, but you can tell that he's a uh, pretty pissed on account of uh, being shot in the head. I got good instincts for when people are pissed at me. Yeah. It's a good skill to have. Especially when you're trying to kill them sometimes. Yeah. Or bring them back alive if you're not an idiot. <laughs> Next up, Andy. All right. Um, seeing Ren run away, I'm going to feel better. But um, I know I was hitting you ain't looking too good on our part, but I promise we're not guilty of this crime. And I'm going to swing again with my great sword. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that's not as good. Yeah, that one's only We're a 15. Guilty of a different crime now. A 15, <laughs> you said? Yeah. Oh, that'll hit. Oh, yay. Exciting. Um, That one is 11 slashing. Cool. Uh, you, you kind of catch your sword through that big hole in his wing and uh, just keep slicing that through. And his his uh, his wing kind of lays limp as it's been uh, sort of bisected. I'm mighty sorry about that. Uh, blood drizzles from the wound, and uh, he he kind of he kind of just flares his remaining wing uh, menacingly. And then it's the archivist who is going to shoot him with lightning, which he does do. And the angel's now looking rather bloodied. Next up is Ren. All right. Uh, my main spot is now going to be, you know, like 10 feet back. But I want to try running up again with my great club and avenge my terrible attempt the first time. Oh, sorry. So that's much better. Oh, that is a 16 to hit. Hell yeah. You club him. All right. And then I'll roll damage and five. Solid five. Cool. Right on the head. You bonk him in the nog. It makes like a, it makes like sound like two pots being hit together. <laughs> his, his ears are ringing. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, disengage back up a little bit. Nice. Uh, the angel is going to swing at Andy. Uh, and what is your AC? My armor class is a whole 12, so shouldn't uh, be too hard to hit me. All right. He hits you first with that bring on a rope. Uh, that bri Ooh. brick on a rope, rather. <laughs> And you take uh, five points of damage from that. And then from his sword, you take seven points of damage for a total of 12. Ouchie, ouchie. Uh, now then, I get that fire. And then we're back up to heart. Yeah, I'm just going to fucking shoot him again. All right. Ring a ding ding. Because this, I don't think we're getting out of this at this point unless we kill the bastard. So fuck it. You know, as the kids say, 
That's 22 to hit. Okay. Jesus. That's 14 damage. Wow. All right. Uh, on your chart somewhere, mark off that you've killed one angel. <laughs> and the bullet leaves your gun uh, in an explosion of, you know, fire on account of that muzzle flare. <laughs> And um, sails towards the angel. Everyone sees it in almost slow motion. Uh, it enters, like it hits him in where the nose would be on the helmet. And the helmet just kind of like peels itself open like a blooming flower. And a fountain of blood and brain just kind of spray out as the bullet hits it. It's, it's, it's like you shot a soda can with a BB gun. It is, it's messy. Oh, God. Oh, this is epic. Is he is he dead? Did did you just kill him? Do you think he's still alive? Yeah, he slumps I, over I, and like what's left of his head kind of pours itself out on a, onto the floor. He's still propped up by the vines, uh, since it has like half of his body wrapped up in it. Um, but everything else is just like it's 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 like someone knocked over a can of chili. It's it's uh it's messy. <laughs> Jesus. And he's gonna go take a pulse anyway. <laughs> You're taking a pulse on a on a head that doesn't have a neck. Yeah, I'll check his wrist. <laughs> I don't know how these angels work. Uh, yeah, you don't find anything. He's got a sweet watch on though. He's not gonna take that. He's gonna look so nauseous. <laughs> uh, Rin's gonna look at a blesser and go, "Blesser, the angel slayer." That has a bit of a ring to it. It's just hard. It's a third of the syllables and half as painful to hear people mispronounce. <laughs> Fair enough. I've never seen anybody die before. Oh, God. Where in the hell are you from? I'm from Kansas. <laughs> what the fuck is Kansas? <laughs> it's just farmland on the edge of a city. Oh, God. We got horses and too many plants. <laughs> All right. Can I just like take a minute and reload my rifle real quick? Uh, yes. There's still the, no the alarm going off, but normally one wouldn't expect that the angel would go down in like three rounds. And he's gonna spend the minute trying not to throw up. Cool, make a constitution save. <laughs> Hell Rin's yeah. Gonna go, Rin's gonna walk up to Andy as he's uh, making the save. Do yeah, that's a fat three. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Ren, do you want to try to assist Andy in holding back his barf? <laughs> yeah, me and all three feet of me are going to hold back the six foot seven dude as he barfs. Yep, yeah, totally. Well, you could try rubbing his stomach. <laughs> what? No. Can you even reach? <laughs> you, you have a concept. I don't. That's not how you help people throw up. What are you? T oh, my God. No, stop him you from throwing up. You rub back. Come on. I'm going to climb onto his back and pat his back, like <laughs> a piggyback ride. A very, right. very turbulent piggyback ride. All right. The first wave of barf comes out, but as you feel the pats on your back, you have advantage on the roll because you're being assisted. Make another con save. With advantage? Yeah, with advantage. All right. That one's a 14. Cool. Yeah, your 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 puking adventures stop at lunch. You don't see breakfast or last night's dinner come up. Oh thank God, I love those green beans. <laughs> God damn it. Thank you, dangerous lady. <laughs> Can I rifle through the corpse's shit while they're doing that real quick? Do you mean rifle as in like loot the body or do you wanna like No, I mean like I wanna just look through no, I want to see if I can find anything in like a quick, like 30 second frisk that I can just like take. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of knives on him in addition to his big angelly weapons. I'm going to take a couple knives. Just good to have them. Sure. Write down Ren four knives on your inventory then. Hey there, heart. I want the watch. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I'm just going to tuck these knives in, like, various pockets on my person. Nice. Um, he's also carrying uh, six silver pieces 
which you can divvy among yourselves or just hide and keep to yourself if you like. If I, yeah, I'll divvy them up. <laughs> Andy doesn't want them. But I'll, I'll give three to... Yeah, we, I can divvy them up with uh, Ren and the fucking book guy. Ooh, shinies for the archivist. Come to Papa. All right. Ren, Ren reaches around to Andy's back and grabs it and flips it. Because, <laughs> snatches it out of the air. Make a dex save. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, no, you're making me do that because I'm only holding on with one arm. Fair enough. Where the heck is my dex? It's up top. Okay. I missed it for a second. Uh, nat 20 plus 2, so 22. Wow, it looks super cool <laughs> then. <laughs> me may- holding out of the, the flip looks cool, not me holding on one arm. Got you. Yeah, yeah. Like, you do like an yeah. NBA trick shot with that thing, but it's a coin, not a basketball, so. A lot less mass. <laughs> Uh, and then on nice. on a uh, on a on a small keychain is um, a uh, embossed little piece of metal that looks like a uh, grayish blue horse. And also on that keychain is uh, a set of keys, but instead of a key, there's a small sugar cube on the end. <laughs> it's car keys. Yeah, for a chariot. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll, I'll pocket those real quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where are you guys? Uh, where are you guys heading for now? Out. Onward and outward. Okay. Uh, how do you guys want to walk out into the lobby? Do you want to like make a full dead sprint, or do you just want to act natural? We should probably act natural. Yeah. <laughs> don't be suspicious. Don't don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> don't be suspicious. <laughs> Everyone make a charisma save. <laughs> oh, fuck. Why? No. Why? How dare you do this to the one character who has the lowest charisma of any character I've ever played? Same. God, same. I've never had a negative charisma before, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 10. Okay. Uh, where is it? I got a... Uh, 14, thankfully. Cool. The gods are with me, and I got 17. Hell yeah. Odin's with you. Oof. Um, you guys, you guys walk out pretty calmly, and you see, like, there's a good, like, 30 angels out there in the lobby, like, milling about. Um, who is eating chips in here? (laughs) Okay, I thought I remuted me, and I'm, I'm I want glitter pins and drawing on my arm. I'm sorry, I thought I remuted. <laughs> Amazing. I heard everyone go quiet, and I just knew it was me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys head out to uh, you guys head out through the lobby. There's a bunch of angels milling about, filing paperwork, uh, doing some miscellany. No one really notices you on account of your charisma saves. Yay! Um, and like they just assume that the alarm is just being dealt with. Still, they're so no one, literally, no one believes that an angel could be killed. Good for us. Yeah. Um. So you guys head outside, and you're greeted with what this world actually is. Heart, this is a this is a this is an everyday thing for you. But for the other guys, you are standing on uh, an island kind of rock formation um, that's floating in open air in space as though you're high up in the sky. There is no earth below you. There's just more rocks uh, intersected with these rocks are clouds. Occasionally off in the distance, you can see flying horses and pigs. Uh, there's a few rivers that are just water in open air and the sun pervades everything. Night appears to only come whenever a very large piece of rock passes over the sun and ends when that rock moves out of the way. Are y'all seeing this? I certainly am seeing something. Where's the land? Flying pigs or they're floating? They're flying. They got wings. Okay, okay. 
all Lester's off on her own trying to figure out which cherry it goes with these keys. <laughs> <laughs> like clicking, clicking tongue, just <laughs> trying to figure out where. Uh, it's the horse that looks the same as the uh, the blue gray horse in the. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> The chariot is ugly, black, and spiked. Every uh, every other chariot has to be parked a little away from it because they're worried he's going to scratch the paint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's sizable because it's built for uh, like a 12-foot tall angel. If you guys want, you can all cram into the back there because it's roomy for him, so you can squeeze in. Yeah. Oh, uh, is it So it's manned by a horse, right? Yeah, it's the it's it's got literal horsepower. Incredible. I know a thing or two about horses, unfortunately. I might I might try my hand at it. Uh I mean I've worked farming equipment and land vehicles my whole life. I don't know if this is much different since it's a flying vehicle, I imagine, but um, the youngest. Will you take the keys from uh Hart then? I will ask. Okay. Hart's just gonna kind of just underhand toss him like, "Yep, nice." I will. I will catch those. Um, gonna walk up to this horse. Um, hold on, my spell sheet isn't loading in. Stupid. Oh, he's well, just opening his mouth. This. Like this, this is this is this is his job. <laughs> While you're trying to do this, Blesser's going to be, like, trying to help the very tiny people into this presumably very tall, like, carriage. Oh, yeah. Like, if, if chariots had, had makes and models, this is like a Humvee chariot. Oh, my God. And, like, it does mm. not have those little courtesy stairs that some of those big trucks do. Well, I'll certainly have to build some of those. Some stairs, that's, that means... But uh, yeah, Rin accepts your help if you like. If you offer a hand, Rin will accept. But if you're just like, "Oh, come, come here, I'm gonna pick you up," Rin's gonna give you a certain little look. <laughs> nah, it's gonna be like that hop in, like full arm grab and try and pull into the. Okay, you're pulling up. That's even. Yeah, she, she'll accept. She's fine by that. Rad. I'm gonna hop up onto the coach, like the driving seat, I guess. Is that a thing here? Uh, no, chariots are standing room only. Oh, okay. Then I'm gonna also climb in, very confused as to what the hell this thing is. The horse kind of kind of bends its neck around as far as it can go and opens its mouth again as though it's like expecting a snack. I'm going to put in the sugar cube with horse handling expertise. <laughs> All right, so the horse takes the sugar cube and kind of like chews on it thoughtfully. And then, like, you're pretty sure he nods. Oh dear. Um, and and uh, 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 he does his little his little neigh and his little his little winning just <laughs> like an engine revving. Oh my god. <laughs> um, he's got the sugar cube in his mouth, and the rest of the keychain is just kind of dangling out of his out of his uh out of his horse lips. Amazing. Uh, and he, 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 he clomps all of his little hooves on the floor. And if you would like to, you can take those reins and get, get this, uh, get this puppy up in the sky. I'm going to do that. All right. And I'm going to look over my shoulder to heart. Um, seeing that I have no idea where the hell we are or where the hell this place goes. I might need some directions at some point, but let's just get those. out of here. The archivist helpfully opens up one of his little books. Oh. Uh, and gets out a map very quickly. And doesn't slow down the stream at all because he's looking for a picture. <laughs> right. All right. And for you guys, where, he brings up this map. Where would be the safest place to try and uh, take our happy asses to? Well, we're at the White Citadel right now. Um, the Mako Barracks are where... Uh, I don't know why I'm saying this in the accent. The Mako Barracks are where uh, Hart is typically from. Um though it's not exactly a very lawful thing. And as you've just murdered uh, a cop, like a space, like a, like a fantasy cop, uh, yeah, you can bet your boots you've gotten, uh, you got a bounty on your head. So probably not there yep. where the bounty hunters are. Quartering Castle is all uh, 
if you want, you can just look at this and imagine it as the uh, alignment chart, I think I recall. But if you like, you can also go to Tour de Matri or the Alchem Tower, uh, as the archivist helpfully points out. These uh, these got some magical folks here, here and here. Um, Alchem Tower and uh, Tour de Matri. Um, if you like, you can head over there and see what's what. They might be able to help you with your whole teleportation issue. That might not be a bad idea, seeing that we got to investigate what in Sam hell got us here. Any opposition? Mm -mm. Um, so we have the option of... Let me go, let's keep going. Are we at the Crown Jewel right now? You're at White Citadel. The White Citadel. So Alcom Tower is closer. Um, yes. I might argue that we go to the farther one, the Demetri. Through the Demetri. All right. Yeah. It's a fair point. In that case, I don't know much about running from the law, but I imagine you don't want to stay close to the law. <laughs> Not generally, unless you're trying to take refuge in audacity. <laughs> nice. My mother said I do that quite a lot. In that case, I will pause the recording and uh, go get a little break. Everyone else, I recommend go get some water or a snack or something. Uh, be back in like five minutes. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, Hey, we're back. How's everyone? Fine. Cool. All right, so you're all heading north. Indeed. That's fantasy talk for north. <laughs> Thank you for the translation. I wasn't sure there. All right, so um, as you're heading that aways. The archivist kind of points to the map helpfully, and he says, We're heading to the Tour de Matri now. Um, uh, don't get too worried about the uh, pronunciation of that there, there, word there, there. Uh, it's um, French, which doesn't exist in this world, so. Doesn't exist in mine either, it's okay. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> they all died the horrible death that was deserved. <laughs> French so that's what happened to, to fantasy future France. World War 17 took her out. <laughs> My God. How far in the future are you? Jesus. I don't have a conception of time. I live on a farm <laughs> with some cows. There's been a lot of war. There's not a lot of world left. Wow. But at least France and Angelica are dead. <laughs> you keep mentioning who the hell is Angelica? She was this demon spawn horse we had. <laughs> I swear to, to every heaven there be. She tore down our barn single-handedly. She put a bruise on my paw the size of Texas when Texas was still around. <laughs> <laughs> we lost it in the Seventh World War. That was just Texas versus itself. Um, <laughs> very unfortunate. Me and her, we went we went toe to toe. We were, we had a boxing match, you see. She knocked me out cold one time. That was when I learned I could turn into a horse, because I turned into her. And then it was then it was Angelica versus Angelica. It was I thought it was gonna be to the death. She took me down. One of the cows must have saved me. I'm a little bit offended by the term devil spawn. <laughs> My apologies. Um you are, you seem to be a bit nicer, although you did kill a man. I'm still getting used to that. Angelica never killed a man that I know of. She might have killed several. She probably did, actually. He would have killed I, you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm very appreciative. Do not get me wrong. I'm just adjusting. This is all very new. I've never, I've never even been to the city. Um, this is just a lot. He had a brick. He was hitting me with a brick. Who uses a brick? People in the Let's city. Plus, it's just gonna kind of pat one of his shoulders just super fucking awkwardly, just like, they're there, and then just look away. <laughs> I've been having just a, a real day. Fine. Left my mom on. She was telling me something important, and then I got a weird stomachache, and then I'm in prison. You know, 
making fun of the cityscape uh, uh, tractors. It's what I get. Uh, so anyway, the archivist kind of raises his hand again. Yes, Archie. Um, so, uh, we, uh, there's a, you know, you'll figure it out as you go, actually. I don't like the sound of that. Do I know what he's talking about? Uh, no, you've never heard of Tour de Matri before. No, yeah, shit. I'm not a very well-read mercenary. <laughs> oh, this is a real secret zone here. Oh, joy. So uh, it's a long, uh, it's a long chariot ride, but we'll kind of, uh, we'll kind of just blaze past that since I don't feel like role playing eight hours of uh, sitting in a chariot, standing, in fact. So you roll up to this tower. Um, as you uh, as you go, you see a lot of the ground. Uh, the rocks are very light. A lot of them are still gray, but a lot of them are. Um, a much lighter gray. Some of them are almost white. Uh, there's a lot of quartz and marble everywhere. The grass is a lighter green, uh, and the water is clearer and blue. Like the water itself is just blue. The clouds, uh, initially you thought it was a trick of the light, but they do in fact come in pink, like big old wads of cotton candy. I like that. Um, and the whole, like, the whole dimension it looks is kind of pastel colored, like a, like an Easter basket. Hmm. And this, uh, this disparity is highlighted when you come to Tuer de Matri, because the ground that it's on is a lot darker. It looks almost black compared to everything else, but the dirt and the rock and the stones of the tower itself are all a harsh, gritty stone. Like, you can see the textures from here. It looks like it would cut your hands if you ran them over it. There's a... Uh, Good. There's a uh, very small piece of rock, mm -hmm. very, very not enough room for what it's what is sitting on it. And then, as you see on the map there, a short, squat, ugly little tower, like the, the rook piece in a chess set. Uh, made of chipped gray stone covered in black paint. Hmm. From the top, there is a little flag. And that's about it. Is there a safe place to land the carriage? There is. Neat. I'm going to touch it down. If someone indicates to me that's where we're supposed to be going. Oh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty open and shut. That's a, uh, it sticks out pretty obvious. It's, it's this ugly piece of shit in this, mm -hmm. like, Easter basket landscape. Like, skyscape, even. All right. So, He's just roasting this carriage so hard. Or this chariot, rather. So you set it down and uh, you're on what passes for solid ground around here in these parts here. Um, the only thing here is grass, a much coarser and ugly grass. Um, the horse spits the, uh, the uh, um, little key at you, the sugar key at you. I assume you I'm catch gonna, it. Yeah, I'm going to take it and pop it. Cool. Uh, it kind of tries to graze a little bit, but it's it's a very chewy, thick grass. It looks like, like it, it, it looks it looks like it would gum his teeth up. Oh. Um. The only thing here is the door to the tower. What do you guys do? I made mean, better to hide indoors than outdoors, I suppose. Archie kind of um, proffers the book to you and uh, shows you that he's flipped to the page with the Tour de Matri. And if you'll read it, you'll see uh, the primary notable thing about it is that it's not from here and no one knows anything else about it. Definitely the best place to hide then. That's kind of like us. 
Yeah, but I'd, uh, I'd be a little cautious. It's a this place is a shithole, uh, from what I can tell. Um, so the the spot of land we're on, yeah, uh, in front of the horse. I would like to use druid craft. Okay. To make um, it says I can expedite small plant growth. Could I do that to make the grass more edible for this horse? Um, you do that, and it grows into a small, coarse little shrub. Definitely more palatable, but still not, uh, not at least relative to this dimension, healthy looking. Okay. I'm going to pet the horse and thank it. This is really out of character for you. Your character likes horses. <laughs> no, he just feels bad because it drove eight hours. That's longer than anybody. He knows you don't do that to horses. It's you a like magic him. horse. He's getting used to that fact. <laughs> well, good on you. Good on you. Truly playing against type. He's allowed to have depth, okay? This is also, you guys' only way off, so he'd like it to stay loyal and not leave. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Um, I think we should... Go ahead. No, you were going to say investigate the door or go to the door or something Maybe. yeah i think we should, i think we should hide in there i know our uh our uh our friends are worried about the the safety of it but like literally if it's a piece of shit no one goes here no one it's not from here no one's gonna investigate us in here we can lie low so uh Bryn's gonna dismount and uh love what is it be the head of the pack whatever you call it vanguard no, like literally, whatever they call the person who's the head of the, it's a term. Like it's a term. Yeah, that's the vanguard. No, that's not. It's <laughs> anyhow. She's gonna lead the way. Okay. Feel free. What do you do when you get to this door here? Uh, I hear a dog outside in real life, and I knock three times. Okay. Uh, the door will not open. Uh. I guess I'm going to investigate then. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Sorry, I was picked up one of the demon dice. I was pissed. Uh, that is a 13. All right. The door has some kind of trap on it. You can definitely tell. It's okay. a physical trap. It isn't magical in nature. Oh, okay. That's slightly better. Uh, I, I guess ever uh, everyone has a bit of a bit of a tricky little thing about it. It's a uh, I guess booby trapped is what they'd say. Booby indeed. <laughs> Dang it! Do you know how it's booby trapped? Because I got a knife I could just throw it at the door. I think a knife would be suitable. It doesn't appear to be magical means. Uh, no magical means in the slightest. All right, y'all might want to give a bit of a birth. I've uh, never really thrown knives before. Oh, well, I'm gonna scramble on back then. I'm gonna move Probably Archie smart. back as well. Can I just, just pull one of my knives out of nowhere and just huck it at the fucking door? Yeah, sure. What do I roll for? Wait, hang on. I have thieves tools also. Oh my god! <laughs> I forgot! I forgot I have thieves tools! Oh, you know what? I also have thieves tools! <laughs> you okay, so guys. It's not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and throw it, and then if that doesn't do anything, I'm gonna try and, like, thieves tool it open. Mid-throw, you go, wait a second, and you feel on your hip, and there's the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> In my little fucking satchel or whatever. So what do I roll to just throw a knife? That would be dex. Okay. Is that a saving throw or just straight dex? Uh, it's a... I mean, I think you would have proficiency in it since you're a ranger. But I'm a hunter. Which is a subclass of ranger, right? Oh, it. I normally it has the... Okay. Well, that's a natural 20 regardless. Cool. Um, your, uh, your knife thuds next to the, uh, the door. Like, next to the handle of it, and you hear it kind of click something uh -huh. in there. 
and the door swings open uh, from the next to the um, from next to the door handle. A little uh, a little little trip wire, a little spring wire, uh, kind of swings idly next to it. Hmm. And you have disarmed the trap and fiddled this riddle. All right, I'm gonna go Fantastic take work there, at the door. Cool. Fantastic work there. Yeah. All right, what do you guys want to do from here? Into the into the depths. Cool. Go ahead and head into the tower. Who's going first? Uh, I'll go second, honestly. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll go first. Nice. I'm from here, and I have a high-ish AC. Yep. All right. You head in. Uh, and as you step into the, as you step up onto the steps, a kind of, a kind of pop, uh, happens underneath one of your feet. Like you, Shit. like you stepped on the world's smallest landmine. No. Oh. Uh, and a voice echoes, um, a semi-posh, semi-British accent echoes from the top of the tower. As near as you can tell, it's a woman's voice saying, watch your step. Or what? Your leg will be blown <laughs> off. Or I'll, wh what are you, what are you doing here? Why have you come here? It's a long story. We well, were told time. that we were told that there were um, magic folk here. We've got a magic issue we need some explaining with. Are we in the wrong place? Did I land us in the wrong place? I'm sorry to intrude. Invisible I, voice. I, uh... She, she's kind of taken aback at, uh, at... Your your very your very simple folksy attempt at um just saying hey. <laughs> you hear uh, uh, you hear some doors unlocking above you and uh, some little stippy staps, as someone oh. comes down the stairs. Um, it is a robed woman. Well, hello there. She uh, is holding a wand in one arm and a staff um, kind of behind her. You can't see the arm holding it exactly. And as near as you can tell, um, she's like definitely ready for a fight, but you don't think she's going to start one. She looks all three of you over and then uh, with the wand taps uh, the side of her head. And you notice that she's covered in um, all scarves, really. And you can see what appear to be eyes behind there glow faintly. And she looks over all of you. First, she looks at uh, the archivist and kind of shakes her head and says, you need to leave. Anyone who's killed and eaten an angel kind of can't. You shouldn't. What the hell? What? What? What the hell? And then uh, she looks at Ren and Andy and nods and says, yeah, that's um, that's textbook uh, teleport sickness. I, I look at Andy and I'm like, are we supposed to be? I teleport sickness. Your stomach's been uh, feeling weird for a while now, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that does explain some stuff there. <laughs> that was a short joke. I was like, she's going to freaking kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Just my mic here. And she looks at heart and she looks a little bit longer at you and, and then kind of shakes her head and is like, someone's teleported you to here and then back to here. As near as I can tell. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be fucked if I know what it is. Day ain't over. Day ain't over. Um, with, uh, with the staff behind her back, she kind of stamps it on the floor and, and gestures at you three and says, you three come up. You find a hole to crawl into. Archie, why don't you go wait back in the carriage? Um, I hope that's not too inconvenient. No. Any horse is a friend of mine. 
Brett? Sorry. Sorry about this, Arden. So, you guys head up, I assume. Yeah. Sure. It's just the three of you and this imposing woman wearing uh, lots of robes and scarves. What do you do? Uh, be on guard and just, uh, I mean, follow a couple. St- I follow a couple steps, like, like slower than expected for a person, you know, being led somewhere. Just to in case I gotta, we gotta run. Need a bit of a head start. Fair enough. Fair I've enough. been in more dangerous situations than this. I'm just going to kind of saunter, not give a fuck. Andy's kind of looking around at this place. Uh, ma'am, you said we've been uh, teleported. Possibly, uh, yes. The, uh, our friend Archie back there. Well, not quite a friend, our companion. Um, he said if we could figure out who done teleported us, we could use it in our trial. I don't know how good that'll do us now, but yeah, is there a way to figure that out? Um, yes, there, there is. Are you taking us there? I, hmm, okay. I've got, I've got a bit of a problem. I think you can help me with it because it'll be mutually beneficial. Happy to help so, let's talk hypothetically here. Say you needed somebody, say someone who may or may not be, you know, on this plane of reality, needed someone killed. Oh boy. And that, you have heart's attention. <laughs> and that someone is me. As in, you need, as in someone wants you dead, or you have a. Uh, uh, request. I've uh, I've I've got a bounty on my head, an unofficial one. It's not cleared through Mako. Um, if you'll direct your attention over here, and you see that she has an identical map to the one in the uh, archivist's book, because that would mean that I don't have to make any more art assets for this. <laughs> um, you can see she has an identical map, and uh, there's a lot of knives, darts, and uh, some scorch marks on where. Alcum Tower would be. Oh. Uh, there's someone who lives here who wants me dead. There's someone by the name, well, they go by their title, which, eh, a lot of that going around. Um, they refer to themselves as the Alchemist. I assume it's like the techno band. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of look at Ren. I have nothing to do with this, personally. I... I mean, you saw I was teleported here. I've never been to this plane in my life. Yeah, no, you're not. You're not her. I would recognize you. Um, I assume. I've got a uh, all kinds of sight. You are all in whatever state you appear to be normally, except for West. I'm trying to read your name here. Pardon. I'm trying to read your name from your mind. Oh, um, you can call me Andy. My last name is Westerson. West. Ver- uh, yes, Andy, then. Um, yes, you have uh, several natural forms, which predilects me to think that you may be a druid. I, they called me that once the, the, the tutors did. Uh, I don't know nothing about that, just that I can, I can become certain animals sometimes. Well, that is what a druid means. Um, you may have interest in heading a little east, but for now... We're currently looking at, um, the alchemist wants me dead. Can we get your name, ma'am? Uh, I have no name. Well, that's unfortunate. Nobody but in my- But call you something. Yeah, nobody in my family has a name, but all the women share one title, no matter where they are. You may call me the matriarch. Well, the matriarch you are, um- why does this alchemist want you dead? Um, maybe I'd better show you. Uh, she drops the staff out of the arm that's kind of behind her back. And right. extends uh, what passes for an arm kind of towards you. Instead of uh, a single arm like a human would have, she has uh, sort of like... Um, 
<laughs> well, it's like she's got like a flesh-colored octopus grafted there. Oh. She's got a whole mess Ooh. of tentacles where her left arm would be. Andy's going to draw back a little alarmed. Yeah, I know. It's 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 a little strange, but I was born like He's this. never seen a tentacle before. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Not a lot of what? octopi in Kansas, eh? <laughs> what? Are those your fingers? Oh, my dear. They are, uh, they're, they're, they're tentacles, tendrils, if you prefer. My, my left arm is them, vice versa. Does it hurt? Oh, oh dear. No, they're useful is all. Um, I was born with them. It's, I have a, okay. I have a sorceress bloodline and kind of a blood curse going on. Uh, I'm descended from a very long line of very, very strange women. Um, it goes back several hundred years and quite a few generations, but they're not even from this dimension. My whole species isn't. And the alchemist has a lot of interest in my blood one way or another. The curse of my blood can be used to fuel very specific things. Like for example, for instance, a teleportation spell that can work around the angel's block on it, which naturally means that the alchemist wants it. I can see how that would be handy. Um, yes. Does this mean... So it sounds like somebody was able to get around the block to get us here. Could they have somehow gotten your blood as well? Oh, I gave it to them. Oh? I feel pretty confident in my guess, but I don't want to say. If you guys know who it is, that makes... Well, that makes you dangerous. Um, I'll put it this way. He's he's an enemy of the angels for a lot of reasons. He worked with me. I was I was an experiment for him. Um I and he we share a dimension. Um I suspect he may be your benefactor. I've been well. stuck here for quite some time. Um I've been able to communicate with him because of the whole, you know, blood thing. Uh, it's a weird trick where using alchemical potions to create magical effects can somehow get around things. And my blood contains the reagents for a teleportation spell. So I've been... This sounds like a lot of things I don't understand. Mystic magic mumbo jumbo, some bullshit. Basically, he wants to either kill me and get a lot of my blood all at once, or... Uh, she rather, the alchemist, um, she wants to either kill me or capture me and just kind of, uh, milk my bone marrow until, well, the end of time, I guess, uh, for the goodies in my veins. That's horrible. It certainly oh, is. However, um, there is a nearly unique piece of equipment that they bear that allows them to make potions of teleportation which is very irritating because I can't why is that it something about this dimension this whole dimension has been essentially locked down people can't move in or out of it and teleporting through it moving through the multiverse getting too close to it will pull you into it like a maelstrom which is probably how you ended up in jail you likely weren't even supposed to go here first I suspect that your suspected benefactor wanted to bring you directly to the throne room. But you were shunted here, and here we are. The throne room? Uh, yes, he's a sort of king. Oh. Sort of king? Yeah, um... It's a... Look, it's very complicated. It would tell... It would take a good ten months to tell the story properly. But on the short of it, we got a sort of king who teleported us here for some reason. Yes. Your blood does magic. Yes. And this alchemist wants to essentially make you into a cow of some sort, milking you for your goods. Bingo. However, the said alchemist has the ingredient we need 
to make a potion of our own. And with that, we can get you to your benefactor and back, yeah, God willing, but I'm not really sure of the direction you want to take. See, and with this, she kind of, uh, her tentacles reach out to the staff that she had, um, and she kind of raises the wand. She uh, uh, gestures them at you semi-threateningly, and she says, if, I, if you so wished, you could kill me and take my blood to that alchemist, and she'd be very pleased to help you. Um, but I wouldn't try it. I'm a pretty bad motherfucker. Well, we did just kill an angel. You ain't seen nothing yet, honey. You don't know what I've seen. You know that you, bless her heart, have a reputation. I didn't need to read your mind to find out who you were. It's just heart. Yep, I've heard that one too. My informants in the Mako barracks tell me that you're not very good at picking up your bounties in the way that they want. Bounties. Bless who's gonna, like, kind of take a lap, step back, take a lap, like, (laughs) I'm gonna kick this girl's ass, but I need to know it. All right, so... That's the shame about coming from this dimension. I already know who you are. You two are somewhat of wild cards. Be glad I just didn't kick you out like I did the archivist. I am appreciative, I think. It's nice to have some degree of answers. Um, So our options are take you on and attempt to bring your blood to some stranger we don't know. Yes, or go there and rob the stranger and bring it back to me. Both are indeed options. Neither of which will get us home prompt. Um, This is certainly an ordeal. You're also Uh, free to look around for any other options. The Deeps may have something, but I... You would need money to go there. mm. The Deeps... She she gestures at the wall. The Deeps is that little rock next to that big potato-shaped mountain. Yeah. The Deeps is a big black market. And also a regular market, and then some of it's a Vanta black market, which is an even more illegal <laughs> black market. <laughs> That's pretty, That's pretty nice. With apologies. Um, more. A part of me, a part of me, really wants to to hear of the full story. We only, we've just only met you trying to hide out, and. We're already being recruited into a quest that you says you say will get us back home, but how can we take you at your word? You can't. Oh, joy. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, I mean, this is this is something of a leap of faith, and leaping is not fantastic in this place. You will fall for all eternity and <laughs> just kind of hope that gravity will suck you back onto one of the platforms, but until that happens, it's falling. Can I insight check her? Yes. Go ahead and roll. Cool. Hold on, I lost my sheet. What's the number I have it? Uh, 12. Okay. Um, She's hiding something, but everything she's told you is completely true. She's just emitting something for some reason. Say we bring back this uh, equipment. You're, yes. you're needing for this. What's what's to say you won't just do away with us at that point? I have no interest in keeping it myself. In fact, I would rather you keep it on your person in case she comes back to find you. You don't have to kill her. Well, uh, my dangerous lady, Bryn, you mentioned something of a heist. This sounds like Another one. Will this be up your alley? Uh, and Andy. <laughs> uh, it certainly sounds like so, but I'm not not quite comfortable with all of this. But if you believe, if you if you matriarch believe that if this will get us back home, I suppose it's the best lead we've got at the moment, and I will undertake it. All right. What about you, Hart? Uh, 
I'm, at the very least, uh, you're quite good with that weapon there. Um, it'd be good to keep you around if you don't mind sticking around with us, uh, seeing that we're on the run. She's going to just kind of pinch the bridge of her nose and just wave and just fuck it. Fine. It's not like I can really go back to where I'm from right now. At the I end of this heart, this. at the end of this heart, we'll get you back to your bountying. I promise that. Yeah, that's that might be a little bit difficult, seeing as we did just kill a cop, which means there is probably a bounty out on me. And since I hang out with bounty hunters, that will make this a little difficult. Well. We'll just have to make you into someone else for the duration of our investigation. <laughs> Becoming a bounty, bounty hunter. Um, <laughs> I don't know how this might work. A so bounty hunter new. hunter, perhaps. That's it. Well, uh, matriarch, um, what was it, what technology do you need us to be stealing? Okay. It's pretty clear when you're looking at it. You might even want to write this down. It's called the Alchemist's Alchemit. <laughs> Don't laugh. This is serious. It's an oven mitt that allows you to make... <laughs> Don't laugh. It's serious. It's an oven mitt that allows you to make potions. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it is it colorful is it a, a bright color type of sort oh yeah it's all autumnal stuff it's pretty clear are there rocks set above the knuckles <laughs> uh no it's uh it's it's got one of those little pads on the on the palm so you can grip stuff like right out of the oven and also um, oh, I was <laughs> I was thinking it was like the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> no, well, it's just well, a uh, just an oven mitt that's been enchanted to allow handling of very hazardous stuff. Uh, you could slap the surface of the sun with that thing, and the rest of your body would be incinerated, but your hand would be fine. <laughs> Convection and all, you know, it's one of those things. But you could pick up lava with it. That would be okay. Oh, I've always wanted to do such a thing. I can yep. tell you that right now. Well, nothing stopping you from doing it once. <laughs> well, I mean, I could truly build myself another limb if I if I was so inclined to discover the the the, the feel of lava. But I've uh, held off for the most part. <laughs> How common is lava where you're from? Um, oh, not super, not super common, but uh, you know, I I run into it once or twice. I I do a lot of uh, metalworking and such, so. Got to deal with the very hot temperatures. I've seen it in them their picture shows, but... Uh. <laughs> well, so, uh, do we have anything to be worried about over at the tower? At um, the tower? We were told there were... If we, I'm assuming the alchemist is at the Alchem Tower. Ring-a-ding-ding. We were told that there would be other magic users there. That was our other option to go, but we figured here cause we were sort of trying to get away from somewhere. Yes. Um, on account of the current situation, I think it might be better if you don't go in guns blazing. In fact, you could even try just getting in there and stealing it. Alchem Tower, as you may be able to tell, is broken off a castle that doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Perhaps we go in like we did here, um, just seeking help. Um, people tend to be nicer to folks just looking for help. You could do that. I like your kind words, dear sir. So <laughs> clever. Well, you can take the long way around the core. Um, she gestures at the big rock in the middle. Uh, it's something of a neutral ground. Uh, that's, you know, because it's in the middle of all the important pieces. Uh, you could also try passing through the farmlands. I think you may find some kinship there. You could go to the Wood Galaxy. Uh, mm. You know, stop up, hit some side quests. 
if you like, you could find the money to get to the deeps and buy something, and you may be able to make a facsimile of the alchemist. However, um, considering the uh, half robot's current state, that may be unwise. The half what? Her right there. The gnome. <laughs> Pose, that's fair. Um, so uh, we got some options here, y'all. Um, it might be nice know. to get some money together. I'm so oh. half robot. I'm sorry. You're I have on. my mic muted. <laughs> well, this is this is a bit of a. I don't know. I'm losing my. Go on, go on, Andy. Go on. <laughs> I'm losing steam. Um. So. We've got, you mentioned we could go and get some money together. Um, I would like to try our hand over at the tower, um, but I'm not that, hmm. What are you thinking, Hart? We got some options here. This is your hometown, home plane. Uh, I do definitely think we need to take the long way around more towards the woods than towards uh, Mako Barracks because, again, bounty hunters are not generally the charitable type. Other I'm glad you seem nice at least. Other than that, I got fucking nothing. I think getting money together would be a solid idea, but... Uh... Uh, I'm more on the, the speed speed side. I'd like to keep it going. Not quite take too long on one thing, if that makes sense. I've been- I, really, I really only know the one way to make money, so I'm not <laughs> positive I'll be too much help. Oh, uh, we can always- we can always teach a new, uh, new, new bounty hunter new tricks. That's how it goes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you turn in the bounty at the Mako Barracks, where the bounty hunters are. I can see how that would be a problem. They've never seen me before. I can just, uh, I don't know, disguise self or something of the sort if I have that. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> So we should. You're saying that for our safety's sake, we should continue penniless and take the longest route around. With I'm not saying we need to go penniless. I'm saying we need to go bull neck over barracks. And if I'm either going to need to be instructed or something, because I know how to make money doing one thing, so if we're gonna make money in another way. I'm gonna need some fucking education. <laughs> <laughs> My mom always said there was time for learning, but she never did no learning herself, so you know how that be. That's a bit hypocritical. A little bit. Isn't that how all mothers are? Um, <laughs> yeah. I've only ever met the one, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, dangerous lady, are she outside... <laughs> I think it might be worth our trouble to stop by the wooden area, try and find some way to make a penny or two, because I imagine at some point we'll have to eat. I sleep at the least. I hope that's a thing in this this realm, because uh, it'll be very unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Sleeping is a thing. Are we going to bring fucking Bookhead McGee? I don't uh, see we wouldn't. He seems helpful. And I think he would want to know, be privy to some of our plans, if not all of it. He did eat a per person. A part of them. Out of <laughs> Cannibalism is still, lady, I don't know where you're from, but here, cannibalism is illegal. Where I'm from, it's just kind of recommended against. Well, that's fucking weird. I come from a weird place. <laughs> well, the both of you have an angel under your belt. Um, I do appreciate you not eating the heart. That would have been 
even more traumatizing. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do that. But Archie outside reminds me of uh, we have in our time uh, the the GPS. I've heard about him in the city. He reminds me of one. That these little, these little technology pieces that'll that'll get you places. They're real handy. And he's not as little, and he talks a little bit more, but I think it's a little bit nicer. <laughs> and if anything else, we can always drop him off somewhere. Doom him. <laughs> that won't make sense. All right. Fuck it. Let's go. All right. Solid. Let's get it going. As you, uh, as you uh, start to make your way out of the tower... The matriarch kind of stops you and she's like, welcome to uh, Nirvana, by the way. What? That's the name of the plane you're on. I don't know if it's ever been formally named to you, Hart, but yeah, that's uh, that's what this is called. That's what the Fifth World War was fought over. It was a band. <laughs> well, here is the name of a plane. I hope this one doesn't cause no world war. I only heard bad things about those. <laughs> oh my god. Just what can immediately. You're a funny little man, Andy. You're a funny little man. <laughs> I'm just talking about my history. I don't see what's so funny about a war. People died. All right. <laughs> So we'll pick out exactly where you guys go next session, but that is a pretty good place to leave it. <laughs> what you guys thinking? That was so fun. I'm glad. Solid, solid. Yeah. <laughs> you got any I'm here theories? For the technology. Got any theories? What? Yeah. No. <laughs> or I... might betray us, but I love him. <laughs> My brain is making a connection that is not here between this campaign and a different campaign. Oh? The matriarch. A oh, king yeah. that's not really a king. <laughs> An extra planar matriarch with a weird body, specifically. She's from a weird family. Let her live. I know, but just like I was thinking it like, too. My brain's like, like Yeah, weird family where everyone it's not. Has that name. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having a good time. I'm yeah. glad. I'm enjoying it. I can't wait for next session. Um, see you guys next week. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. I'll go ahead and cut that fucking recording. Uh thanks for playing with me. Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, yeah. And then I guess we'll see everyone back next time for 10 rounds of missing. Indeed. Later. Uh, yeah. uh, keep yeah. missing, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what our, our wacky sign off catchphrase was. Ren had the first miss. Oh, we got one down. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs>